You might think quicksand is one of the deadliest traps in nature. Step in and the ground itself pulls you down until nothing is left. Movies made it look like certain death. The body sinking, the struggle, then silence as the surface closes over. But that's not how quicksand works. The truth is more complicated and in some ways even stranger. So what actually lies below? What happens to the things that sink in? Would we ever find them again or are they still down there waiting? In this video we're going to bust the myths, dig into the science and see where quicksand really appears in the world. We'll find out what happens beneath the surface, whether anything that sinks ever comes back and most importantly, what you should do if it's you caught in the trap. My name is Mark Watts. Welcome to Deep Science. At first sight, quicksand looks ordinary. A damp patch on a riverbank, a hollow in the desert, or a stretch of mud left by the tide. Nothing about it warns you to keep away. Yet beneath that surface, the ground is in a fragile balance. Disturb it and the soil changes character completely. Quicksand forms when fine grains of sand mix with water in just the right proportions. The upward flow of water reduces the friction between sand particles, suspending them in water and creating a loose, unstable mixture. When pressure is applied, like a person stepping on it, the water and sand separate, causing the person to sink until the density of their body matches that of the mixture. What seemed like solid ground suddenly behaves like a heavy, clinging liquid. The sensation of stepping into quicksand is difficult to compare to anything else. It grips like wet cement, but it moves like water. Each shift of the body presses the grains tighter, creating suction. Struggling only makes it worse. And yet, quicksand is not the endless sinkhole of imagination. The density of the mixture is greater than that of the human body. A person won't disappear. In most cases, they stop sinking around the waist. The real threat comes not from being dragged under, but from being trapped, unable to move, while exhaustion or rising water closes in. Which leaves us with a puzzle. If quicksand doesn't behave like the bottomless trap we've been told, then why do so many of us imagine it that way? For much of the 20th century, quicksand was more familiar in the screen than in the wild. In films and pulp adventure stories, it became one of nature's great terrors. Tarzan swung over it. Cowboys stumbled into it in Saturday matinee westerns. Even comedies like Gilligan's Island or family films like The Princess Bride played on the drama of characters being slowly consumed by the earth. The scenes were always the same. A character strays, the ground gives way, and they sink slowly but steadily until only a hand or a hat remains. It was a perfect plot device. Sudden peril, no villain required. But the science tells another story. Quicksand is denser than the human body, so you'd float long before vanishing. Terrifying, yes, but not bottomless. Another exaggeration was speed. The word quicksand suggests instant collapse, as though the ground swallows you whole in seconds. In reality, sinking happens slowly. The danger lies in the effort to escape. Every thrash presses the grains tighter. Every frantic pull makes the trap stronger. Add exhaustion or an incoming tide and the peril becomes clear. So the stories misled us. Yet they weren't entirely wrong. People do get trapped. People have drowned in tidal flats. And that is why scientists eventually set out to investigate. Could they recreate quicksand in the lab? Could they measure exactly what happens when something sinks into it? To separate myth from reality, Scientists in the Netherlands set out to create quicksand under controlled conditions. In the lab, they mixed sand, clay and salt water, then lowered weighted objects, including a human-sized dummy, into the slurry. 
The results were decisive. The dummy didn't vanish, it sank only part way, floating around the waistline, just as physics predicted. The old Hollywood image of quicksand as a bottomless pit was impossible. But the experiments also revealed something less reassuring. Freeing a trapped leg could require the same amount of force as lifting a small car. The harder you pull, the tighter the grip. This explained why people become exhausted and why panic can be fatal even when the sand itself cannot drag them under. The researchers went further. They tested objects of different sizes and weights. Heavy ones sank deeper, lighter ones stayed near the surface, and sometimes, as the sand and water shifted, items that had been swallowed were slowly pushed back up again. Quicksand was not a one-way trip to oblivion. It was a restless system, sometimes burying, sometimes surrendering what it held. And this wasn't just a curiosity, the study of quicksand helped scientists understand other unstable soils. The same physics governs landslides and a process called soil liquefaction, when the ground behaves like liquid during an earthquake. Even robotics teams have studied quicksand to design machines that can move across treacherous terrain. So what began as an attempt to debunk a movie myth ended up illuminating the hidden behaviour of the Earth itself. But that still leaves a question. If scientists can explain how quicksand works in theory, where on Earth do we actually find it in practice? This is the Amazon River Bank, where the ground never stays the same for long. The river carries more water and sediment than any other on Earth, constantly reshaping its edges. In the rainy season, whole sections of soil loosen until they hover in that fragile balance we call quicksand. To travellers, it looks like ordinary mud, but locals know the warning signs. Step wrong and the ground pulls you in. And this is Death Valley in California, a place better known for heat than for water. It seems the last place you'd expect to find quicksand. Yet when flash floods sweep through its canyons, they leave behind pockets of fine sediment soaked and unstable. A crust forms on the surface, looking safe, but beneath it lies ground that collapses under pressure. Even in the desert, quicksand waits. These are the tidal flats of the Wadden Sea stretching along the coasts of the Netherlands, Germany and Denmark. Twice a day the tide retreats for miles, exposing a vast seabed. To the eye it looks walkable, almost inviting. But buried beneath the surface is blubber mud, a kind of quicksand that grips the legs like iron. For centuries it has taken lives. Entire groups of travellers vanished here, trapped before the tide rolled back in. This is the Mekong Delta in Vietnam, one of the most fertile landscapes on Earth. Nine channels of the Mekong spread into a maze of waterways, carrying endless silt into the soil. Farmers and fishermen know the risk of unstable ground here. Step into the wrong patch and the land, waterlogged and fine-grained, can suddenly give way, as though the river itself had reclaimed it. And these are the sands of Morecambe Bay in England. Wide, flat and beautiful, but dangerous. The bay's channels shift constantly, redrawn by each tide. For centuries, guides led travellers safely across because venturing alone meant risking the quicksand. Even today, with maps and warnings, people are caught here. The danger is not legend, it is living memory. Different places, different climates, but the same unnerving result. Landscapes that look safe, yet hide traps beneath the surface. And that brings us to the deepest mystery of all. When something sinks into quicksand, an object, an animal, even a person, what becomes of it? Does it stay hidden forever, or does the ground eventually return it? The answer depends on physics, chemistry and time. Quicksand is rarely deep, a few feet at most. Objects don't fall into endless voids. 
they settle at a level determined by their density. Lighter items like wood or clothing stay closer to the surface. Heavy ones, metal tools, boots or packs can sink deeper into the slurry. But even then, the shifting movement of water and sand sometimes pushes them back up. Quicksand doesn't always keep what it takes, but in some cases can also preserve what falls into it. In most cases, organic material, cloth, rope, even flesh, decays quickly when water and oxygen circulate freely, but in certain environments, the story changes. Where waterlogging limits oxygen, decomposition slows dramatically. Archaeologists have seen this in other wetlands. The famous bog bodies of northern Europe, preserved with hair and skin intact after thousands of years, wooden tools and boats found in tidal mud flats, even seeds and textiles perfectly sealed by sediment. Quicksand can create similar conditions. If a body or object becomes buried in a patch with low oxygen flow, it may remain intact far longer than expected. Instead of destruction, the ground can offer protection, but most of the time quicksand is restless. Sediment shifts, water rises and falls. Items buried one year may be released the next, or swept away entirely by rivers or tides. So when something sinks into quicksand, the outcome is uncertain. It might decay, it might be preserved, it might even return to the surface. And if that's true for objects, then what about people? If lives have been lost to quicksand, could any trace still remain? Imagine dropping an object into quicksand, a shoe, a pack, even a heavy tool. Would it ever be seen again? The outcome depends on three factors, weight, density, and the movement of the ground itself. Light objects like fabric or wood tend to remain near the surface. Quicksand is denser than water, so Buoyant materials have a tendency to float within it rather than sink out of reach. In many cases, they would resurface as the sand shifts. Heavier objects behave differently. Metal, stone or even waterlogged boots can sink deeper, compressing into the softer layers below. But even then, they rarely vanish forever. As water seeps and sediments rearrange, the same processes that pull objects down can also push them back upward over time. Quicksand is not a static system. It breathes, it moves, and it sometimes returns what it once took. But there are limits. In tidal regions, items may be buried under successive layers of silt, locking them beyond reach. In riverbanks, Currents can drag them sideways, embedding them far from where they were lost, and in some cases decomposition will erase them entirely, leaving no trace at all. So would you find the swallowed things? Sometimes, the physics of quicksand makes complete disappearance unlikely, but recovery is never certain. Objects may rise, scatter or dissolve, depending on where and how they sank. And if that's true for lost objects, then the same question applies to us. What would actually happen if you were the one caught in quicksand? And what would it take to escape? Picture it. You're waist deep in quicksand, the tide creeping closer. Every instinct tells you to fight, kick, thrash, claw your way out. But the harder you move, the tighter the sand locks around you. Panic is the enemy. The first step is stillness, breathe, slow your heartbeat. Quicksand only grips harder when you struggle. Then lean back, spread your arms. The same density that stops you from sinking completely can also help you float if you allow it. Your body is lighter than quicksand, use that fact. Now work one leg free at a time, don't yank upward. Wiggle, let water seep in, feel the grains loosen around you. It may take minutes, but patience creates the space that brute force never will. And finally, think wide, not deep. A branch, a backpack, even your own arms pressed flat. Anything that spreads your weight makes escape easier. Crawl or roll toward firmer ground, rather than trying to climb straight out. 
Most people don't die from the sand itself. They die from exhaustion or from water closing in before they can break free. Survival depends less on strength than on calm, deliberate action. For something so uncommon in nature, quicksand has had an outsized life in our imagination. During the golden age of pulp cinema, it became one of the stock perils of adventure. Tarzan swung above it, cowboys stumbled into it, explorers in B-movies vanished into it. Even comedies like Gilligan's Island or fantasy tales like The Princess Bride found room for the drama of slow sinking. For decades, quicksand was as much a fixture on screen as volcanoes, quick escapes or jungle pits. The reason was simple. It was a perfect device for storytellers, the ground itself turning traitor. A threat that appeared without warning, demanding no elaborate setup. It was peril stripped down to its essence. Sudden helplessness, the earth devouring its own characters. By the 1990s though, the trope had worn thin. Filmmakers used it less and less. Audiences grew wise to the cliché. But the metaphor outlasted the genre. Even today, people describe overwhelming situations as like quicksand. A trap that only tightens the more you fight. It has become shorthand for struggle, for paralysis, for losing control. That endurance tells us something. Quicksand lingers not because it is common, but because it captures a universal fear. The sense that what feels solid may not be. That the familiar can suddenly betray us. And nature plays that trick in more than one way. On land, it waits beneath our feet. At sea, it rises without warning. Sailors tell of waves appearing out of nowhere, towering higher than buildings, striking with no time to react. For centuries, they were dismissed as legend. But then, one was measured. A wave so massive, it rewrote what we thought was possible. How big was it? Find out in this video. If you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel and let me know in the comments what I should cover next.